I'm saying things that you're not supposed to say. But the key to being uncancelable is that the rigor of what I'm saying, that I apply to the facts that I'm spitting, is actually higher than the supposed rigor of the alleged technocracy that's in charge of censorship and cancellation. So I'm going to go a little further today. I'm going to explain why the climate change cult is a hoax, why climate change policies in this country, I'm going to say it, are a hoax. First, let's just go down the cascade of relevant questions in the climate debate. Are global surface temperatures going up? Yes, marginally, it appears to be that way. Is man-made activity likely to be part of that? Sure, I'll concede that as well. Appears, at least based on the data, that man-made activity likely has something to do with it. But now we get to the real meat of the question. This is where the action is. It's not about being a climate denier. It's about being a denier of the climate change agenda. There's a difference. Does this pose an existential risk for humanity? No, it does not, is the answer to that question. Let's talk about actual metrics as it relates to human prosperity and human flourishing, the thing that we're supposed to actually care about. Today, eight times as many people die of cold temperatures as from warm ones. You would think that global warming was then not nearly as much of a problem when it related to human death rates as would be, say, human cooling. That is why, as recently as in the 1970s, the number one concern of the climate change movement wasn't global warming, it was actually global cooling to an ice age. Look at a Time magazine cover, a Newsweek magazine cover in the 1970s. Literally, there was pictures of a looming ice age and why we needed to, wait for it, wait for it, burn less fossil fuels to stave off that type of climate change. I'll get back to the cynical motivations on this, but the question is, do we face an existential risk as a consequence of global warming? I think the answer to that question is unambiguously no, not only because of death rates, but the best answer to all temperature-related death rates is more plentiful and abundant access to fossil fuels. You'd think that if this movement had to do with addressing, say, the impact of the climate on human beings, you'd look, as my friend Alex Epstein has done, to climate-related disaster deaths. Well, the climate disaster-related death rate is down by a staggering 98% from a century ago. Why was it? Well, in part, innovation due to fossil fuels and greater utilization and more effective use of fossil fuels. So now you take a look at what's actually going on with this agenda. Does it have to do with necessarily protecting human beings from global warming? Does it have to do with global warming at all? Or does it actually have to do with something else altogether? Well, you, I give you a couple pointers to suggest that it actually has to do with something else. One is the fact that this movement that is obsessed with constraining fossil fuel production in the West is perfectly fine if we shift that production to places like China, to companies like PetroChina. Isn't that interesting? Now you look at the fact that actually even at PetroChina or places in other parts of the world, methane leakage is actually far greater than it is here in the United States. And even if you subscribe to the tenets of this religion, methane, which is a different form, a different hydrocarbon, different hydrocarbon that you're releasing in the atmosphere, methane is 80 times worse for global warming, the thing we're supposedly preventing, than even a unit of carbon dioxide. So that wouldn't make sense, would it? Combine that with the fact that many people in this climate change movement are also hostile to nuclear energy, the best known form of carbon-free energy production known to mankind, and you get to the essence of what's happening. It's not at all about protecting human beings from the changing conditions of the planet. It's not about an existential risk to humanity because that's false. It's really about just limiting America's impact, not even humanity's impact, but America's impact on the atmosphere and on the climate itself. So in the name of telling you that it's about climate change's impact on human flourishing, what it's really about is constraining human prosperity in the name of actually preventing impact on the climate. And that is why the anti-impact framework, the anti-carbon, the anti-carbon dioxide framework is utterly wrong and grounded on the wrong premises in this country. It shouldn't be carbon dioxide or carbon emissions that we look to limit. And ironically, they look to carbon dioxide without even looking at methane, but put that to one side. That's the wrong place to look. The anti-carbon framework is wrong. What we need to look at is a framework that prioritizes human prosperity, including even if we advance human prosperity through greater use of fossil fuels. 
And that's the way we need to actually change the, the philosophical framework itself to make sure that it accomplishes the goal of advancing human prosperity. And here's the wrench that throws in for the climate movement. The problem for the climate movement is that it really wasn't about the climate at all. It was about penalizing and shackling America for advancing relative to other parts of the world, including China. And the climate agenda was really just about closing that gap. Well, if we acknowledge what's really going on, that it has nothing to do with the climate, but it's really just about human prosperity that we should be concerned about, then America is going to continue to outperform the rest of the world. That's the worst dream of the climate movement. But once we see that with clear eyes, that's exactly what's going to happen. And as somebody who's running for U.S. president, I will not apologize for something that advances the prosperity and the flourishing of everyday Americans. That's what this agenda should be about. That's what we'll put back in place for it to go back to being about again.